Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs. Hello and welcome to Classic Restos, but first, these people would love to hear from you. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penrite. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. Now, on this week's show, I have returned to Kurnell, just south of Sydney, Australia's birthplace, to what has become quite a significant classic car event. And here is some information about Kurnell that you would only find on such a high-quality program such as this. Now, back in the 1770s, England didn't have any car shows. The government of the time noticed Captain Cook not doing much after a few ocean cruises and writing his own choreography, so they told him to get in his boat, called the Endeavour, and get down under to discover Australia. Now, when he sailed just through the heads behind me here in Botany Bay, Captain Cook whinged that it was too hot. You see, Australia should have been discovered in the winter where it would have been a lot easier on him. Which now brings us to this. Welcome to the 2016 Kurnell Nationals Car and Bike Show. And just near where Endeavour sailed by is Martin Park Kurnell. Every year this place comes alive thanks to the fine efforts of the New South Wales Streeters Sydney and proceeds from the day are off to a great cause. This event is open to all makes and models. It's a great family day and it's wonderful to see a show of this size establish itself in the southern suburbs of Sydney as it's attracting all types of classics and customs from far and wide. Starting off today's fantastic event we have Matt. Hello Matt. G'day Flex, good to see you again. Oh, thanks mate, my pleasure. Yes. You've got a 1954 barn door. Now, how's this for a combi? This is super rare, right? That's correct. Very rare indeed. Yep. There was only 299 of these delivered here in Australia. Wow. And um, this is probably one of the, the oldest ones known, which apparently by paperwork, it is the oldest of the 11 window. And um, it was built in March, uh, the 16th of March, sorry, in 1954. So no one to date has got an older one um, yet. So... I can't see them, they will, because it's probably one of the first year, and of course it was only 299. I, th I think, you know, it's, it's a pretty, pretty rare example of that year. They say that owners can look like their dogs. Well, they can go, uh, you know, for this as well, because this guy here, look at him. He's just VW through and through. He's a bunch of fun. He's got this incredible square thing here, a box going through the air with Adolf Hitler on the back. Now, you can't get more quirky than that. You can't. You can't get no better than that. No. Adolf there watched me build the whole car as well. He's so. got a lot to answer for. <laughs> He's got a lot to answer for. He absolutely has. Now, why is it called a barn door? The barn door, the main reason why they're called a barn door is a large engine lid on the back um, so therefore that's why they're called the barn door and they're unique in that way and also another reason also is the peak on the front of the roof is actually no peak I should say uh, they just finished fl uh, flush with the windscreens so up to um, 54 that's how they were then after that with the new changes in 55 you had the peak come in and the smaller engine lid and so on so um, that was when they sort of um, their, their production they sort of they changed and um, they started refining it and trying to improve all the little problems they had in the early days. You know, what's amazing, these vehicles were essentially commercial vehicles. They got bashed, trashed, they got flogged, they rusted out. It's amazing to see that this can be restored so well. I mean, it's a concourse job here, Matt. Yeah, it is very concourse. It's not fully original in every way. It is, um, has got later model running gear in it. Um, but it disguised in a way to look original, and that, that's how I like them. So it's a it's a hidden basket, really. Mm. 
But um, I, I think with the old combis and they, how good they look and everything, you still, with these days, I think you need a little bit more extra horsepower just, just to keep up with today's traffic. Well, yeah, even you if know, you had 25 uh, horsepower, that'd be good, right? Well, that's correct too, yeah. you know. But and no dashboard in 54, didn't need a dashboard? No, no dashboard whatsoever. You just got a little bit of sheet metal there and a, and a little bit of plywood, and that's all your safety gear you got, I suppose. And <laughs> Still got the legendary split screen, though, and I think that that's a super cool feature. It's the best feature you ever get. It's the best air conditioning you can ever have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got to let the air come through at 21 miles an hour, don't you? Well, you do. you just got to keep your mouth closed and um, make sure you've got sunglasses on, of course. <laughs> and then uh, you won't have any problems. Unless you get a bee or a big dragonfly coming in your front window, then you yeah. might just stop and pull over. That's it. Well, you, <laughs> you certainly wouldn't want that. Mm. Now, this vehicle is of significance. It's made it to a magazine. Uh, front cover as well. I mean, you know, when these guys put so much time and attention into restoring these vehicles and they appear on magazines, you've got a photo album down there with plenty of shots there of the restoration process as well. How long was the build time, Matt? The build time was over five years. Um, I, I kept a tally on it in my garage with a calendar and the hours worked out very close to 3,900. So it's a lot of time and effort, but you, you're not on it every day. So you, yeah. you get a break, you know, you, you come to a stage where you've got, you've got to put the tools down and yeah. not so much the wife complaining or anything yeah. like that, yeah. but it's, um, it's more or less a, just the fatigue of doing it all the time, yeah. you know, and you, you want to enjoy your hobby and I hate it. So yeah. for that reason, it worked out about 3,900. See, only car people understand when you restore a car. I mean, the people that don't quite get it, the first thing they say is, is, oh, couldn't think of anything worse to do. Get home from work and do that. But it's amazing when you are a car person to restore a vehicle, how therapeutic it can actually be. Yep, it, that's that's dead correct. And like, it's like you say though, after being at work all day, you know, like I love I love to come home and think, okay, down to the shed, you know, yeah. down there, and hang on, I've got a few commitments here. I've got two boys. I better, you know, sort them out, and then yeah. they'll go to bed. Then time to start work at eight o'clock at night, and then next minute it's midnight, and you go, oh, oh I've got to go to work again it's tomorrow. It's not uncommon to be <laughs> working in a shed, sweating like a pig at night in the in the middle of summer, and then it can go into the winter, and you've got to put tools down late at night because everything's so freezing cold. But it's what you put your through to come up with these vehicles. I think it's amazing. Matt, thanks for being on today's show, buddy. Thanks so much, Fletch. Good seeing you again, and likewise. You are watching the 2016 Kernel Nationals Car and Bike Show, and you are seeing it first on Classic Restos. Back with more right after this. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hair and Forbes Machinery House from a garage jack through to a lathe, Hare and Forbes has the range. And Hare and Forbes Machinery House are Australian owned, established since 1930. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machinerynhouse.com.au. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, find your closest store at machinerynhouse.com.au. Penrite, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penrideoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. Making our way through the 2016 Kernel Nationals Car and Bike Show. Things don't get much cooler than this. We're sitting in a stretch limo, and it's not just any old stretch. It's a 57 Chev. Got the owner here, Troy. How you doing, Troy? Good, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. You got it made in this old girl. Mate, she's pretty cool. Now, look, you're in the business yourself. What's the uh, name of your limo company? Uh, Wright's Limousines. Based at Cameltown. Yep. I've used him a couple of times on the job. He does a good job. And you've got this Chev. Now, you've got obviously a collection of later model cars that you use every day. Where does the Chev go back with you, Troy? Uh, it goes back about uh, 18 years. Used to drive it on weekends for weddings. And, uh, yeah, just took it on from there. How many of these are getting around Sydney, do you know of? Uh, stretches, just the one at the moment. Yep. Yep. You, you've got it. I've got it. That's it. 
That's awesome. Um, now, 18 years ago, did you buy it as is or did you go through the actual uh, customisation of the Chev? Uh, no, we got the car. We actually acquired the car ourselves about nine years ago. Um, I've been around the car for about 18 years and uh, a bloke out in Camden actually built the car here in, Sid- in uh, out of west of Sydney. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a pretty cool ride, isn't it? I mean, you know, long as, and uh, 57 Chev all day long. All day long, very long, yeah. <laughs> What's it like to drive? Um, like a big bus, mate. Yes. Yeah, she cruises all day. Yeah. Yep, 350 under the hood. Mate, if this doesn't turn heads, I don't think anything would. You can't hide in this one. They hear you coming, they see you coming. You've committed your last crime, haven't you, mate? Definitely. <laughs> Troy, what can you tell us about the actual restoration of this stretch? I uh, understand it was it was actually cut in half from a Bel Air, uh, built in a factory in Camden. Um, stories go back that they used uh, 44 gallon drums to roll the panels and bits and pieces. But uh, rumours were there was three cars involved. I uh, can't verify that, but I believe about two cars were involved. Wow. Yeah. Would have been much easier doing it back then than going through 357s now. Oh, certainly would be. You get, you get hung now. It's also, you know, it's a time of the craftsman and, uh, you know, I take my hat off to the guys out there that can still do that type of work. I mean, you know, it is getting more rare these days. It certainly is. You go back, the old school blokes know how to do it yeah. and they do it properly. They don't rush it through. They're not there to make the dollar. Yeah. It was built actually for the bloke, for his own business yeah. and he wouldn't take a booking until it was finished. Yeah. And you see a lot of these uh, type of stretches with the later model cars too, and uh, I guess in one respect it's uh, kind of like sacrilege because you know that the cars are, are chopped and they're modified, but look, at the end of the day, they're, they're done for a purpose, and if they're done right, well, that's not so bad. It certainly is. Some companies bodge him up, but a lot of companies out there do a good job too. Now, just digressing from classic restos, driving limos on a daily basis, what's it like as a job? Uh, can be long days, a lot of time at the airport, a lot of time not at the airport. But uh, varied customers, get to meet a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Meet some characters? Uh, yeah, this bloke named Fletch from down south somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> met him a couple of times. <laughs> Now, Troy, I've been waiting ages to catch up with you with this Stretch 57. Thank you for bringing it along to the 2016 Kernel Nationals. You've brought it along especially for the interview on today's episode of Classic Restos. Well done, mate. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time, Fletch. Been great. Moving through, how good is this? It's time for Angelo now. Hello, Angelo. Hello, Fletch. How are you, mate? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, what man goes to so much trouble to bring his own lino to spread it out over the lawn? What a gorgeous 1966 XP four-door Falcon. What a sensational car. Thank you, Fletch. It's been my pride and joy ever since I've got it. Okay, give us the rundown on it. What can you tell us about this car, Angelo? Okay, the car is a one-owner car before me. I'm the second owner. I bought it a year and a half ago and I've had it fully restored and uh, it's a daily drive as well. And I've brought it here to uh, show it today and I was very happy that I won a trophy. Here we have a beautiful example of a 1966 XP at the last of the early shape Falcon as we traditionally know it. They were a fairly well developed car by this time. Super Pursuit 200 cubic inch six cylinder engine up front. Um, Nice car. It's a beautiful car. Drives well, handles well and uh, it's a real pleasure to drive. It's good too having one that's the last of the run with that massive transition between that and going into the XR Falcon, the Mustang bred Falcon. Um, now tell us Angelo, what's it like as a car to drive? Oh, she's fantastic. She drives well, handles well. Uh, all the suspension's been really done up again from to original specs. Um, but she's a beautiful cruiser, beautiful car to drive. Was it a good car already when you got it? I did bought it from a one owner the car was complete never had any rust in it only had a 20 cent coin size piece of rust on the front wheel arch chrome mold where the screw went through but uh, other than that rust free Jesus excites me this stuff this is amazing isn't it to get these cars that are already the age they are and already they're in fairly good shape add a restoration on top of that and you've got something that's better than factory yes it's a beautiful car, like I've been saying. Um, I will never sell it. It's uh, something that will stay in the family forever and hopefully passed on to my kids. Tugs at the heartstrings, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It reminds me of my youth. Okay, now that's my next question. 
Where does the XP go back with you? You said you've only had this car for a relatively short time, so you must have waited a long time to get this car. Am I correct? Yes, I've uh, I've looked around New South Wales, Melbourne, for maybe ten years to find one in this condition. I found it two streets away. <laughs> in uh, that sort of stuff happens in the United States of America. Yeah, two streets away from my place, uh, by accident, haggled with the guy to sell it. He didn't want to sell it, but eventually he said to me, I'll only sell it to you if you do not hoon it up. Being a Fairmont too, black yeah. vinyl roof, I mean, that's a, that's rare. Yeah, it was a factory option that he added to oh, the yeah. car. Of course, it's a new vinyl roof now, but it was a factory option that he added to the car when he bought it new. Are the seats original or have they been done? Everything's been redone. Yeah, brand new car. Brand new car. Brand new car. Okay. 2016, we're hosting a 1966 XP Falcon, as I alluded to earlier. Well, virtually better than factory. Angelo, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today's show. Thanks, Fletch. It's been wonderful meeting you, and thanks for looking at my car. That's all right. You're Thank welcome. You. Proceeds from any car show always go to fantastic causes. Today, it's Cure Brain Cancer. Now, I have with me Danny, and we have young Kane here. How are you, Danny? Not too bad. Yourself, Fletch? I'm not too bad. Now, would you like to tell us about Kane and where you're up to with things? Yep. So, Kane was diagnosed with ATRT, a very rare and aggressive form of childhood brain cancer, just before his second birthday. He is currently 17 months in remission after having 18 months of chemotherapy and six weeks of radiotherapy. And he's doing well. He's left with a lot of side effects, but he no, has no evidence of disease. Um, are we any closer um, in, in finding out? Like, do they keep you up to date with uh, research and uh, finding an answer to this despicable disease? So acute brain cancer have their research team and quite often they'll give you an update on where they're at and what they're funding and different trials going on. What are your thoughts on a car day such as today and where the proceeds are going? It must make you feel quite overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm very proud of what New South Wales Streeters are achieving and what they're supporting and getting behind one of their littlest members. Overall, how's little Kane doing? He's um, asleep there at the moment. Um, how's he been standing up here today? He's done very well. He's just gotten to him at the end of the day, but otherwise he's been a trooper. How are you with things? Me, it was a very rough journey. It was a roller coaster, but Kane kept me very strong, yeah. seeing how determined and strong he was. Remarkable person and so is Kane. Well there you go, Cure Brain Cancer. The website details are across the bottom of the screen right now if you'd like to make a donation and here's the living proof of uh, what it's all about. So thank you very much Danny for coming on today and um, you've been here all day with Kane yep. and uh, well done, keep up Keep up the good work, okay? Thank you, Fletch. If you love your classic Americana, well then you will adore a Fletch tour. Have a look at this. There is nothing quite like a Fletch Tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. Book a Fletch Tour, it's amazing. We've seen some absolutely amazing cars. What an event. Experience Route 66 from Chicago to Vegas or choose the Detroit Tour. I would make it a point to go to Fletch Tours and come to Detroit. There are five Fletch Tours. Select the one that suits you best. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 1926, Australia's Penrite Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrite Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrite. 
If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hare and Forbes Machinery House. Hare and Forbes Machinery House have showrooms around Australia and New Zealand that will have you browsing for hours. See the largest range of industrial and workshop DIY tools. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machinerynhouse.com.au. Hare and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machinerynhouse.com.au. The Colonel Nationals put on by the New South Wales Street of Sydney has morphed itself into quite a large show. Now to whet your appetite to come back here in 2017, here's a little bit of last year's show from 2015. We've got Matt, how are you Matt? I'm fine, thanks Fletch. Mate, what a delightful 1976 CL Charger, so original. Thank you, yes, yep. Mate, you'd be a happy bloke, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm stoked, yep, yeah? yep. How long have you had it? Uh, 12 months. Mate, how did you feel when you found it and you actually knew it was yours? Well, sort of window shopping on, on the websites for probably five years. Yep. Just got me feelers out there looking, yep. see what you get for what you pay for. Yep. And this come along and uh, I took the flight up to Queensland and, yep. uh, and then brought it back. The first thing that strikes me is the interior. I mean, you look at the fabric of those high back bucket seats, takes you right back into the 70s, Alvin Purple, I mean it's a time warp isn't it? It's so luxury, it seems almost ahead of their time. The original Rego sticker made on the quarter glass, on the side glass, how cool is that? Oh, through Australian uh, living conditions it's it's past at its time, it's uh, <laughs> still hanging in there. Uh, what's the story with the paint Matt, has it had anything done to it over well, the years? It's had a respray, it's the original colour, Stella Blue. Yep. Uh, but it has been repainted. Well, it's getting to the stage now where cars like this are becoming very hard to find. I mean, to find one that hasn't been, well, dicked around with. I mean, you've got one out of the box here. Uh, I think to come so many years down the track and see this example of a Charger, uh, I mean, a lot were wrecked, a lot rusted. Um, this has just uh, escaped and come out the other side, hasn't it? Well, it has, and it's going to remain that way. A lot of people get the big convo mag wheels and yep. the crate engine and... Yep and uh, I've always had an idea on how I'm going to have the charger looking when I eventually buy one yeah. but once I've seen this in this condition yeah. I wasn't going to touch a, a darn thing on it. So Good for you Matt, well done and you've got, uh, speaking of uh, the engine up front, the 4.3 265 still in there? Yeah, yeah still chugging along, yeah. very original. Made automatic, uh, you'd have the little Borgie, little Borg on a 35 transmission in there behind the 265? Yes. I mean these cars, I mean they really are, they really do stand out don't they? They're a, a nice Nice shape, nice design, and uh, mate, well done for having it. Thanks very much, Fletch. Okay, time for Henry now on today's show. How are you, Henry? Good, thanks, Fletch. Good, mate. Good to see Henry, who's got a Holden. Holden HT, uh, HG Ute. <laughs> you have to stop yes. and think about what one he had there for a second. <laughs> um, now, you've pulled off a trophy here today, Henry. What one's that? Yeah, I've got two trophies. I've got uh, top Ute runner-up and top engine bay runner-up. Have a look at the engine bay. Sensational work, mate. Uh, where did you start with this? Did you have this, this vision in mind or did it just end up like this? Uh, well, I used to have a Monaro, which was a bit of a show car, and I thought I'll build something a bit more streetable. Yep. Um, but like every project, they get out of hand and we are where we are today. Yep. The car was pretty clean. I've been had it on the road now for about 15 years. Yep. Two years ago, we finished the engine bay. It took about, again, one of those projects, supposed to be three months. Mm. Took a year and a half. Um, but I'm very happy with the result, obviously, and uh, yeah. It still has a simplistic look around the engine bay, doesn't it? I've purposely tried to keep it as simple as possible, as minimal as possible. Yeah. People stand there and say that it doesn't even run, but it certainly does. Yeah. yeah. It looks so good, but yet it's still so uncluttered. Um, the ceramic coated exhaust headers as well, the extractors just top it off too. What a good thing. It's really good, yeah, and just but a lot of polish. It shines and but it's so much polishing involved. Now we look at the cooling system there, you've got uh, twin thermo fans. How does it run sitting in traffic? Does it behave itself? It's actually quite good. It used to have a bit of heating problems, but uh, we've locked out the distributor now and uh, seems to have cured all the problems. And it's a very hot day today. I drive it here, I'm going to drive it home. Yeah, so. yeah. Look, it's all about airflow. I mean, goodness me, you know, we've all been through it and um, radiators have only got to be 20, 30, 40% or partially blocked and up they go in traffic. If you can get your radiator cores right, your thermo fans working right and your thermostat right, you shouldn't have any drama, should you? No, it goes really good and uh, as long as traffic's a bit of a nightmare, but as long as you keep out of the traffic, it's pretty good, yeah. It was the old story too, the more horsepower that you're making to, the more heat that's generated. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, and it's it's not a massive engine. It's still a cast iron heads, cast iron block. They run 11 nines at Eastern Creek, which I was happy with. So, yeah. So. It's not too shabby. I mean, you'd be the quickest bloke in the street to go and get the milk and bring it home. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I say I'm the last to leave, I'm not mucking around. What an event. The 2016 Kernel Nationals, put on by the New South Wales Streeters, Sydney. Put it in your diaries. Hope to see you here in 2017. As I say, at the end of every show, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch. And I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, and Pace Farm Eggs.